Behold, I'm alive forevermore. We honor you, O God. We magnify you, O God. We hallow your name. We hallow your name. I hallow your name, O God. I bow my knees at your feet. Bow my heart, O God, my soul, O God, at your feet. In worship of your majesty. <laughs> The one whose feet burns like brass. <laughs> I worship at your feet this morning. The one whose feet burns like brass. Whose hair is as white as wool. With eyes like flames of fire. With words like swords to other swords. Jesus, the Son of God, who is God Himself. The living word. Hallowed be your name, O God. Hallowed be your name, O God. Hallowed be your name, O oh God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. There is nothing you can not do. Nothing to hide for you. There is nothing. You cannot do Jesus. There is nothing you cannot do. Nothing. of God is in this place. The presence of Jesus, the miracle worker, is in this place. He's healing the sick. He's setting the captives free. Even right now, make way for you alone we make way
Halleluja. Jesus be glorified, O oh God. Thank you for what you have done. Thank you for the things that will be made manifest in this place. Lord, we gather all the glory and we give it back to you. You alone deserve it. In the name of Jesus Christ. You may be seated. Easter. Help me and look at your neighbor and wish them a happy Easter. Pastor Bridget, happy Easter. <laughs> Praise the name of Jesus. Glory to God. It's resurrection morning. <laughs> Glory to God. What what a day to have a Holy Ghost service. What what a day indeed. Of the Holy Ghost service. This is why he came. This is the reason he came. First John, I think, 3:8, he says, For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. This is why he came. I read a few scriptures and um, before we begin to minister to those who need to be ministered to, thank God for all those testimonies and more. <clears throat> and of course, we are in no doubt as to who made it happen. Who made it happen? Jesus. John chapter 14, verse 12. Most assuredly I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. And greater works than these he will do, because I go to my Father. Praise the name of Jesus. It, 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 um, if you examine this verse very well, there, there are some things, if I were there, there are some questions I would ask Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. He said, because I go to my father. I mean, I thought that you're going to your father would have rendered us helpless and incapable of doing anything. He said, he who believes in me, the work that I do, he shall do also. And greater works than this shall he do. The concluding part should have been because I'm here with you. But here he says, because I go to my father. Because I go to my father. 
And so let's start from the back. Because I go to my father. He who believes in me shall do the works I do. And he shall do even far greater. Because I go to my father, greater works he will do when you believe in me. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. So there must be a reason. So, so that, that should now point us in a direction of what to search for. Why would he, why would we do greater works premise on his departure to his father? Praise the name of Jesus Christ. Now you need to understand that when Jesus was here, as beautiful as it was, because many of you would love to be, how many of you would love to be around when Jesus was physically here on earth? <laughs> <laughs> you know the truth those people they envy you yeah those ones they envy you praise the name of Jesus Christ because when Jesus was here he was limited he was limited in location he was limited by way of location praise the name of Jesus Christ he could not be at two places at the same time. Talk less of three, talk less of hundred, talk less of a thousand. He could only be in one as powerful. The Bible says that he, he, he is the express image of the Father. As powerful as he was, he could only be in one place at a time. And so if there's somebody who is sick here and he's here, the person is guaranteed healing. But if there are people, I mean, let's assume that this is Jerusalem. And that is, you know, say, um, Capernaum or whatever. And then there are people dying in Capernaum and he's here in Jerusalem. He might not be likely able to rush down there within a specific space of time. And then, let's even assume that 10 people came to him at the same time in Jerusalem. And all of them from different cities requesting for the healing of a loved one who is at the point of death. He can't be in all those 10 places at a time. And so he was limited. There is a reason he said, because I go to my father, you'll be able to do greater works than I've done. And many times we try to read meaning into the greater works. What, what does it, is it really possible to do greater works than Jesus did? Greater, yes, in terms of quantity. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, because what other greater works in terms of quality, can you do? He raised the dead. That means that in code, that's the ultimate. He raised the dead. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. He raised the dead. He healed the sick. He walked on water. He fed 20,000. With two pieces of fish and five loaves of bread. <laughs> Praise the name of Jesus. So in terms of quality, there is no greater work than what he did. In terms of quantity, every single saved child of God under the sound of my voice is an inheritor of this promise. That greater works you will do if you believe. Why? Because he's gone to the Father. Now, now going to the Father, if you just it, it's not as simple as that. Just going to so he gets to the Father, so what? So so he gets to the Father, he's talking to the Father about you, saying, Okay, um, she is going right now, right now, Father, transfer some power to her. Um, and then tomorrow, okay, she she she's back now, she's going to somewhere else to heal the sick, transfer some power. No, 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 no. It, it, there's, 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 there's something far much more than that. If that was what he was limited to, then I'll tell you, um, he's going to have to walk himself out in heaven. 
because there are billions of Christians as I speak right now that he will be talking to the father about one by one praise the name of Jesus Christ let me move on and whatever you ask in my, in my name that I will do that the father may be glorified in the son if you ask anything in my name I will do it if you ask anything in my name if you ask anything in my name if you ask anything in my name anything includes how many things it includes all things if you ask anything in my name anything includes physical healing spiritual whatever deliverance it includes finances it includes husband it includes wife anything under anything if you ask anything as long as it's in his name in my name say i will do it if you love me you keep my commandment and i will pray the father and he will give you another helper now that's the point i will talk to my father and he will give you another helper now remember he said when i go to my father you'll be able to do greater works now he's now beginning to explain how it's going to happen if you and i will pray the father and he will give you another helper that he may abide with you forever the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him but you know him for he dwells with you and he will be and he and will be in you at that point in time he was not yet in them and he said to them he will be in you but right now he dwells with you but he will be in you verse 19 a little while longer and the world will see me no more but you will see me because I leave. You will leave also. At that day, you will know that I am in the Father and you in me and I in you. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I am in the Father and you are in me. If it's in the Father, I'm, I'm in him. Where am I? If it's in the Father and you are in Him, where are you? Are you here? Holy Spirit, just pray in the Spirit for a few seconds. Lingradogo Shodogo Branakatani Manse de Gebe de Gebrodo Botade Gediga. Yadoko Dwaro Kushande Gedianaga, Man Sodoko Tada Gadiga, Man Doko Prodo Kosko Dwaro Kushonde, Man Sede Gebede Bolo Katande, Yada Dada Da, Yadoko Dwaro Kusos Manikada, Yakuto Dwaro Kushonde Grado Kusko Dadiga. That the eyes of your understanding be enlightened, your heart be flooded with light. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let me repeat that verse. It says, a little while longer and the world will see me no more but you will see me because I leave you live also let's stop there first because I leave you live also because he leave I live also because he leave I live also because he leaves you live also praise the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah if the devil is threatening you with death, tell him, because he leaves, I leave also. If he's threatening you with a so-called terminal disease, tell him, because he leaves, I leave also. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Peter said, you are a partaker of his divine nature. In other words, what makes God, God is in you. <laughs> Hallelujah. You are a partaker of his not natural nature, 
but it's divine. Divinity means God likeness. It means Godness. That's divinity. Divinity means God. You are a partaker of his God-like nature. What makes him God is in you. And Jesus came to demonstrate that when he, he came to the earth. That's why he could walk on water. Because nature tells us that you cannot walk on water based on gravity. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. But he walked on water to demonstrate the fact that he was not just natural human being, but he was a partaker of divinity. He was God in the flesh. And so because he lived, you live also. The next verse says, at, at that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I in you. I am in my Father, you are in me, and I in you. Pagadogo Shangra Nustande. Zadagida. You see, when this revelation bursts forth in your spirit, you become fearless. You become literally fearless. Even at the face of so-called, in quote, imminent death. Why? Because you know that death has no power over you. Not because of you, but because of him. Because you are in him, and he is in you. Can you imagine Jesus being in a car that is about to have an accident? And then Jesus is saying, Hey, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. <laughs> Who is he calling? And he demonstrated it when he walked the face of the earth. They were moving from one end of town to another by boat. And then Satan came, they started to rock the boat. The reason he decided to do that was because there was someone who needed deliverance on the other side. There was a child of God who was still held bound and captive by Satan demonized, possessed by thousands of demons and yet he was a messenger of God there are people out there they may not look like him but they are messengers of God and there are people in here they may not look like it based on your own evaluation but they are messengers of God the Bible says that that man God delivered and he went to Decapolis a city of 10 town, towns only him to preach the gospel and so it was what that is. And so while they were moving from one end of town to go and deliver that man, right there in the middle of the sea, Satan came, stirred up the storm. And of course the disciples not yet been aware of who they were because the Holy Ghost had not yet come. There was only one person who had the Holy Ghost right there in the boat. And that was Jesus. The Bible says that God gave him the spirit without measure. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. He was the only one who had the Holy Ghost. And why the Holy Ghost less? <laughs> Listen, if you have the Holy Ghost, there must be a difference. And there must be, a, if you know what you have, there, there must be a difference. Kabbalah. There must be a difference. There must be a difference. Glory to Jesus. The Holy Ghost is not just to speak in tongues. The Holy Ghost is the power of God. The power of the highest. Hallelujah. The angels, the angel, rather angel Gabriel, when he was answering uh, um, Mary, Mary was asking, how shall this thing be? Seeing I know not a man. How can I be pregnant? 
without sleeping with a man. And he said, don't worry. There's something super, superior to the natural. He said, the power of the highest will come upon you. The power of the Holy Ghost will come upon you. Hallelujah. And then what happened? He will cause your system to be vitalized. Glory to Jesus. And then suddenly, why did he... The disciples were trying to steer the boat aright, and then they got fed up, and they looked hopeless, and death was imminent. The boat was going to capsize. You know, initially they were trying to play, you know, courageous men, bold men. It's difficult to play bold when you don't have the Holy Ghost. You only be forming, and that forming cannot last. For me, Kade Gadusta. Like the seven sons of Skipper. They were for me. No Holy Ghost. They saw the disciples casting out demons. Come out. And then demon is gone. And they too, oh, he's also take come out. No problem. Seven men from one family, seven men. In the name of Jesus, that Paul used to talk about. Come out. The demon was angry. More like. More like. Me and you people know now. We know, we know. I, 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 when, when did you join them? <laughs> Praise the name of Jesus Christ. He beat the hell out of them. Seven men. Bible said they run out naked. That, that's to show you supernatural power. The demon possessed one man who had enough power to disable seven men. Demon spirit possessed a man who when they held him bound with chain, he will break the chain like thread. That's not natural. That's supernatural power. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. And then suddenly... You know, they just decided, you know what? There's no point keeping quiet and we die. They went to wake Jesus. Why are you sleeping and we're about to die? Don't you care? Sometimes I wonder why people would not just talk straight rather than blaming. Uh, uh, thank God for Jesus. So. If I was the one that woke up there, just that you said, don't you care? I said, yeah. Okay, get yeah, too. I mean, just talk straight. What do you want? You want me to calm the boat? Fine, I'll calm the boat. Why? Have you met such people before? They can't tell you anything without trying to make you feel guilty. Right. But we can forgive them they didn't have the Holy Ghost. They were Holy Ghostless. That's a new, a new terminology. <laughs> Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, Zadagabalabo Shanda. Jesus didn't get up and stand straight and say, okay, let's quickly have a strategy session. Um, let's formulate the strategy. How do we get out of this? How many of you can swim? Seven. Five of you cannot swim. Okay. Those of you can. It is not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. I am sorry for those who depend so much on their natural ability. Depend so much on your natural ability, depend so much on your strength, on your intellect, on your you know, physical capacity. The Bible says the arm of flesh will fail. That's what they are designed to do. That's what the arm of flesh is designed to do. Designed to fail. Designed to fail. There is a limit to how far your human capacity can take you. And so what did Jesus do with that same sleepy eye? More like peace be still. And he went back to that. Be 
still. That's what some of you need to do. There are some times Satan wants to engage me. He wants to engage me, wants my attention. And I look at the situation, I know very well, okay, this is what he wants. That at that point, instead of going on a 21 days fast, what I do is peace be still. And I move on. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Satan is very proudful. And proud people hate to be ignored. Satan is very proudful. He's, he's the epitome of pride. And one thing that is clear about proud people is that don't ignore them. And they can give you anything just to get your attention. And sometimes you need to learn to ignore the devil. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. Peace be still. If there is a storm in your life today, that storm has no choice but to be still. In the name of Jesus Christ. It could be a storm in the area of your health. It will respond to peace be still. was in one Holy Ghost service like this some years back, right here in this hall. There's a brother who was in the ushering department, but, you know, for several months he wasn't able to stand and usher anymore because of a terminal illness, a heart condition that doctors here told him, we really cannot do anything about it, and they recommended that he traveled out to go and get operated. If they operate it here, the chance of survival is next to nothing. But if they operate it there, according to them, it's 50-50. You may survive, may come out alive, you may be dead, but at least you have some chance. And so he began to raise the money. When he walks from here to, like, the door, step there, begins to pant and feels like, you know, fainting. He's a, a, a one strong gentleman. Very energetic before them. He came to a point where he couldn't carry a bucket of water because of the heart condition. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. But how many of you know that doctors out there may be limited? But Dr. Jesus is not limited. He's the chief medical director. <laughs> and we are his co doctors. Hallelujah. And he stood here that morning. And what, what we do most often than now, we ask specifically what was the challenge? What do you want us to pray about? And so I remember asking him and he spoke about it. I lay hands on his chest. Heal in Jesus' name. Heal. Next person. And then he left. He didn't feel anything. He didn't feel any, you know, sometimes you think that God is confined to the spectacular. If it is not spectacular, then God has not moved. That's where Satan deceives many people and robs them of what God has done. And so he left. He said, he realized after 24 hours that hour, 
the weakness he used to feel wasn't feeling anymore then suddenly he decided to push it a bit further he decided to run I mean somebody who when he walks a few meters he has to rest he decided to run he said he kept running ah, what's happening here then he had to go and start conducting tests all kinds of tests on his heart and all the result came out perfect heart Praise the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. He had been raising money to travel. The only problem was that he did not give. He did not bring the money back to him. <laughs> He didn't bring the money back to Dr. Jesus. <laughs> Praise the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We have seen God heal all kinds of so-called terminal issues in this place. And without drama. Without drama. And we are going to see it today again. In Jesus' name. One more scripture, Mark chapter 16. going to read from verse 1 downwards. Now when the Sabbath was passed, let me read from New Living Translation. Saturday evening, when the Sabbath ended, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome went out and purchased various spices so they could anoint Jesus' body. It's, it's interesting to see that among all the names mentioned here, there was not one single man. Not one single man. Brawiza. Not a single man. And those men will be... Okay. Let me not go into another one. Not one single they were afraid. They were afraid. When they came to arrest Jesus, the Bible says that one of them, you know, when <laughs> while he was running, his clothes fell off. He didn't wait to pick it. Full grown man. Reminds me of a sister who told me her and robbers invaded their compound. And her husband heard. And her husband went to wake her up. Honey, honey, I'm robbers. I'm robbers. And he went to hide. <laughs> Don't only be a man when it's time to command. <laughs> it's true. Okay, I said I won't, I won't go there. It's not, <laughs> it's not for today. Yeah. Be a man all the way. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Be a man in showing your family how to serve Jesus. I mean, I expected men to be the one leading this delegation. Be a man in, in, in showing your family how to be fully and wholly devoted to Jesus. And let me also say this to the ladies. From what you see here also, it tells you that you don't have to wait for your husband to show you how to serve God. You can be his inspiration. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. 
Hallelujah. Verse 2. Very early on Sunday morning. What is today? Very early on Sunday morning, just at sunrise, they went to the tomb. On the way, they were asking each other, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? But as they arrived, they looked up and saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled aside. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. I don't know the kind of stone that may have been standing against you before now. This morning that stone is rolled away. It could be a stone of unbelief, a stone of fear, a stone of your past trying to haunt you and trying to tell you how far you will go. That stone is rolled away in Jesus' name. Glory to Jesus. I mean, these guys rolled a stone on the tomb intending to stop Jesus even if by chance he resurrects, he won't be able to come out. There are some people, because of the destiny you carry, there's nothing Satan has not tried in trying to stop you, trying to put you down, trying to cover you. But this morning, that stone is rolled away. In the name of Jesus Christ, the stone is busted. In the name of Jesus Christ. Verse 5. When they entered the tomb, they saw a young man clothed in a white robe sitting on the right side. The women were shocked, but the angel, first, the Bible said they saw a young man wearing a white robe. Young man. So sometimes, angels will appear without wings. And the Bible told us that, that many people have entertained angels without knowing and I believe there are angels here this morning. Yes, and it could be possible that you are sitting by one. <laughs> Praise the name of Jesus Christ. It says, when they entered the tomb, they saw a young man clothed in a white robe sitting on the right side. The women were shocked, but the angel said, the same young man turned out to be the angel. And it turned out to be the angel that rolled the stone away. Don't be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth who was crucified. He isn't here. He is risen from the dead. 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 He said, look, this is where they laid his body. Now go and tell his disciples and claim Peter that Jesus is going ahead of you to Galilee you will see him there just as he told you before he died. The women fled from the tomb, trembling and bewildered, and they said nothing to anyone because they were too frightened. After Jesus rose from the dead early on Sunday morning, the first person who saw him was Mary Magdalene. A woman again. Let me tell you the truth. When it comes to capacity for loving Jesus, I've seen more women with that capacity, even as a pastor. Capacity for devotion to Christ. Ha! Ah, I'm a pastor. I stand before God, I lie not. And I've been pastoring for quite a while now. At least 30 years. I've seen more women with more capacity to be devoted to Christ, to God, than men. And that's why I say this to also challenge the man. That's why you must be intentional in your work with God. You must be intentional. You must intentionally devote yourself. Because Satan does not want you to take your place. 
So you must be intentional in your devotion to Christ. You must, you must, you must determine to remain devoted. Because there are many things that would want to distract you or numb you or make you passive. And that you are you are a businessman or a career person does not should not subtract your, your love from God. One of the most successful businessmen from Africa, we, all, we know him, Cosmos Maduka. There are few people who love Jesus and who, are, who serve Jesus like him. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. I was having a conversation with him yesterday. He lost his wife five months ago. Now, he's not been able to return back to work for business. Of course, you know, there's a system, his business is running without him, but he's not been able to go back to the office, according to what he mentioned to me. But guess what? His ministry diary from January, he buried his wife in January, or January, yeah, from January till now has been back to back going from one place to the other ministry. From one place to the other ministry. His devotion to Christ. And that devotion didn't start today. He started as a teenager when he was 14 years old. Some people think that when you begin to serve God and you begin to lose in life, which kind of God is that? Maybe he's an idol not the God of the universe not the God of the Bible he said I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in health as your soul prosper in the book of Psalm I think Psalm 35 the Bible says he delights in the prosperity of his servant and so you must be intentionally devoted to God intentionally devote yourself devote your time devote your whole being to serving God in spite of the things that try to sway you to the right or to the left. Keep fit in your walk with God. Hallelujah. Bible says Mary Magdalene, the woman from whom he had cast out seven demons, she went to the disciples who were grieving and weeping and told them what had happened. But when she told them what, when she told them that Jesus was alive, and she had seen him that didn't believe her. These 11 men. I don't know why I'm talking like this this morning. Are there women? Okay, these 11 women. Because I say 11 men and you are laughing. Praise the name of Jesus. Remember, there were 12 disciples and they are all male. And one of them had committed suicide. That's what happens to traitors. Praise the name of Jesus. They committed suicide. And then Jesus was left with 11. And then Mary Magdalene shows up while they were hiding. These guys were hiding at this time. And you wouldn't blame them because the Holy Ghost had not come. Because these guys became a different breed of people when the Holy Ghost came. So they were hiding. And then Mary Magdalene shows up and says, Jesus is alive. The Bible said they did not believe him. They didn't believe the one who had walked with them, who told them that I'm going to die, but on the third day I'm going to rise again. So they walked with him for several years, but didn't really believe much of the things he said. It is amazing how you can walk with someone for years and not have faith in his words. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. It is not what you hear that makes a difference in your life, but what you believe. What you believe. Bible said they did not believe him. No, they did not believe her rather. Afterward, he appeared in a different form to two of his followers who were walking from Jerusalem to the country. They rushed back to tell the others, but not no one believed them. 
no one believed them thank God for Jesus so if you are here you are feeling like pastor how can God use me when my faith is not high it's okay you are in good company if you could use the 11 disciples despite their unbelief he can use you praise the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah just, just that your unbelief will limit what you can do for him until your faith begins to rise but it's not going to cast you off and reject you and consider you unfit to be used just because your faith is, is small or little. Verse 14. Still later, he appeared to the 11 disciples as they were eating together. He rebuked them for their stubborn unbelief because they refused to believe those who had seen him after he had been raised from the dead. Verse 15. And then he told them, this is where I'm going. Go into the world and preach the good news to everyone. He begins to give them his last, his final instruction before departure. In other words, I'm about to make a transition, but these are my last words. These are, these are the things I want you to take note of. These are the things that are most important to my heart. The first thing he said, the very first thing, which I believe for him was the uppermost, the priority. He said, go into all the world and preach the good news to everyone. That, that's, your, that's your most important task and assignment as a child of God. To preach the good news, to preach the gospel, to tell people about Jesus is your most important assignment, your greatest task. And I've said it repeatedly in the last couple of weeks here in church, your biggest assignment is not to sing in the choir. It's not to stand as an usher. It's not even to control the technical. Your biggest assignment is not even to worship. Because you can do it better in heaven. Your biggest assignment here on earth is to be a witness out there for Jesus. To let people know that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have an everlasting life. That's your biggest assignment. That's your biggest job. That's, 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 that's the primary thing that God is looking, in quote, looking up to you to do. And if you are not doing it, you are failing him in that regard. You're failing him in that regard because every second somebody is dying and going to hell. Somebody is dying and going to hell. Every second. Every second. And we are the messengers or ambassadors of Christ for reconciling the world back to God. And so Jesus said, go into all the world and pretty good news to everyone. Anyone who believes and is baptized will be saved. But anyone who refuses to believe will be condemned. These miraculous signs will accompany those who believe. These signs will accompany or follow. In other words, all you need for the signs to follow you is to believe. Is somebody here this morning? Please pray in tongues for a few seconds. Please pray in tongues for a few seconds. Hallelujah. He said, This miraculous signs will accompany those who believe. All you need for the signs to accompany you is to believe. It didn't say these signs will accompany pastors, it didn't say these signs will accompany clergymen. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. It didn't say these signs will accompany. Those who, who are come entirely faultless. No. He said these signs will accompany those who believe. If the signs are not accompanying you, it's either you don't believe or you have not ex exercised it. One of the two. No other reason. No other reason. If the signs are not accompanying you, it's either you don't believe or you have not exercised it. And if you are not exercising it, you are wasting 
You are wasting the resurrection power. When God made the heavens and the earth, he exerted a measure of power. But when Jesus was resurrected, he released all his power as it were. Because the Holy Ghost himself was one who went down. The Bible says, if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead. Hallelujah. This miraculous signs will accompany those who believe. I didn't start laying hands on the sick today and see them heal because I'm, I'm a pastor. No. I started doing that as a teenager and I started seeing signs and miracles both in the healing of the sick and the deliverance of the demonized. Why? I simply believe. I simply believe. That was just about a year or so after I got saved. I know that I, 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 I grew up, you know, a pious, very good child. I mean, there are people like that, but I wasn't fortunate to be among those kind of people. I was unfortunate to be on the other side. <laughs> Praise the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. But, but, but God didn't say, no, 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 it's too early. One year, no, one year. You know how many years you've served Satan? How many years you've dirtied your hands? And within one year, you want to be laying hands on the sick and see them heal and cast out demons. No, 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 no. You have to wait for 10 years to be purified before you can. No. No, within one year. I just read the scripture, read it long enough, and I, I believe, I say, wow, this time to follow those who believe. I, I think I believe. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I remember one of the first instances. One young man, we're having just, you know, informal fellowship we had, we had not started the main fellowship which we later started when necessity was laid on us people just came to my house and we're just talking you know how people can come randomly this one come this one comes and then before you know what was happening we're five and we were fellowshipping and then one of them said you know i'm a new christian i'm a new combat i was involved in he was a, a little bit older than the rest of us i was involved in occultism um, up until a few months ago and then um, I did this, I did that okay, what's the story? he said, but the problem is that since I got born again, I've been under some severe attack and every time I'm crossing the road I mean, they have, they have, they've told me you're going to kill me except I come back so anytime I'm, I'm crossing the road I get to the middle of the road you know, something holds me down in the middle of the road he said, many times I've escaped death he said, at one point in time, they sent fire to my house. And my house just caught fire mysteriously, not traceable to anything. And it narrated so many things. And then, I just finished reading, fellowshipping with God that morning, and I was excited in my spirit. And I said, oh, that's more. That's nothing. This is a teenager. I said, that's nothing. I said, that's demonic oppression. I said, let's pray for you. Kneel down. And then he knelt down. We lay hands on him. Commanded that you break. You demon spirit of whatever. Lose him and let him go. He didn't fall. He didn't shake. Yeah, he didn't fall. He didn't shake. And he left. Two days later, he met me in church. And he gave me a bear hug. I, I didn't even recognize me initially because among those of us who got that day was, was the stranger. He came with one, some, uh, one other person. And he told me, I didn't you remember me? I came to your house two days ago and I said this and that. I said, okay. He said, do you know I'm free? He said, I'm completely free. I'm free. And he's going to give me the testimony about his freedom. So when Jesus said these signs were accompany. He wasn't talking about pastors. He was talking about everyone who believed. So every single one under the sign of my voice sitting down, wherever you are sitting down, you are among those that these signs will follow. Oh, Holy Ghost. You know, while I was fellowshipping with God yesterday, you know, at, at a point in time, I, I, I just, I said, God, I said, the needs are too many in the world. 
what can be done for for every believer to get involved in meeting this need every believer to get involved in laying hands on the sick in casting out demons because that is the plan of God there are many people out there who are satanically oppressed who are in prison and they are waiting for you to come loose them praise the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah, hallelujah. they are waiting for you they are waiting for you oh yes that's what Jesus meant in John chapter 14 verse 12 when I go to the Father, now remember at this point in time, he had died, he had resurrected. So he was not telling them what will happen hereafter. More like what I told you about earlier on is now about to begin to happen. I told you that the, the signs you see me do, you will do, and greater than that. Now it's about to begin to happen. And he gave them a small preview. He said, this miraculous signs to accompany those who believe that will cast out demons in my name. In my name. And they will speak in new tongues, new languages, or new tongues. They will be able to handle snakes with safety. And if they drink anything poisonous, it won't hurt them. It won't hurt them. They will be able to place their hands on the sick and they will be healed. Hallelujah. In one of those days, we're having Holy Ghost service. I say, you know what? As usual, I, I mean, I usually call pastors to pray for the people. I say, I'm not going to call pastors so that you will know that these things are real. I call some people from the congregation. I tell them to stand. If you are sick, come. This one's to pray for you. Come and see testimonies. Come and see testimonies. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. I know that there are places where some pastors, they like for this thing to be confined only to the platform. Right? So that all attention. But that's not the plan of Jesus. That's not the plan of the master. That is contrary to the word of God. It, listen, God's plan is that every single one of you will be able to cast out demons and lay hands on the sick. And the truth is that every one of you can, if you will. You understand the gravity of that statement? Every one of you can, if you will. And so we called people at random. Of course, those we know, you know, workers, angels, stand here. If you are sick, come. See testimonies. See testimony. One of the people who was he was a was a doctor. <laughs> you know, doctor cannot lie about healing. Praise the name of Jesus Christ because it's their profession. In fact, she even came with. She showed us the things she has been taking. Brought it out. The symptoms disappeared instantly. Not pastors not pastors. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to Jesus. Verse 19. When the Lord Jesus had finished talking with them, he was taken up into heaven and sat down in the place of honor at God's right hand. And the disciples went everywhere and preached. And the Lord walked through them, confirming what they said by many miraculous signs. Give me the King James Version of that last verse. No, New King James Version of that last verse. New King James Version. And they went out and preached everywhere, the Lord walking with them and confirming the word through the accompanying signs. Confirming the word. Who confirmed the word? Who confirmed the word? God cannot confirm emptiness. God, so, so the problem many times is that we are waiting for God to confirm something that has not been spoken. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So you speak. Give, give me an opportunity to confirm. You have a sick person. Lay hands. Speak. Then step aside. Let him confirm. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 
the Lord walking with them and confirming the word through the accompanying signs. Confirming the word through the accompanying signs. This morning, God will be confirming his word through the accompanying signs. Stand to your feet.